Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jared at 3Cs. It's a beautiful day, so we're going to go outside and do this video. Yesterday we shot the RRX Pro 200 video inside because we had to. Much better today. Um, so welcome back to the channel. Jared at 3Cs. I got Braxton behind the camera as always. And you are looking at the best selling entry level off-road bike on the market. Uh, I am proud to say that we've been a beta dealer since the beginning of this model. It's been 11 years with this model. We've been here for the whole journey on it. And it keeps getting better and better every year. Uh, actually for 2025 it didn't really get many changes other than all new colors so um, this video if you're new to the beta cross trainer welcome I'm gonna teach you about the whole bike that way if you're looking for one we can do that but also if you just bought one somewhere in the country um, I want to make sure it's set up properly for you because I, I do a lot of them and I, I see some mistakes so let's jump into this video so right away in the Beta Cross Trainer, uh, why is it an important model in the lineup? Um, first of all, it's a super low seat height. They've detuned the pipe so we have less of a hit. So the customer can casually ride this on the trails, super easy to ride. It is also easily modifiable when it comes to the power. Um, I'm gonna show you the air filter cage in a minute. It's pretty restricted. We can put a regular two stroke one in there and you can buy the performance pipe. It's an FMF accessory and we can really waken this motor up. Um, it's kind of going to change a little bit this year because the RRX Pro, the new model they just released, is um, a one step above this bike, which is what a lot of people wanted. So I had people buying the cross trainer and then doing the pipe, doing the air filter mod, doing suspension because they wanted this smaller chassis. Uh, but by the time you do all those modifications, I can probably sell you an RRX Pro now. A uh, perfect example of somebody that's modified one of these is us. So we took a 2023 and I've kept it. It's my best friend, Mark. He's been racing this thing and all the hard enduros. He's extremely talented. Uh, last weekend, he actually sheared both foot pegs off at a hard enduro and still finished six in the pro class. He rode for three hours with no foot pegs. Super incredible. So the cross trainer is a woods weapon by far, but we heavily modified that. Um, could I put them on an RRX Pro now for next year? Yeah, probably. It'll probably be a really great stepping stone. So. I think we're going to steal some cross trainer sales next year into the RRX Pro and this is going to return back to my entry level bike. Uh, so let's go over a lot of these features. So let's give you guys a walk around down this thing. It does come with softer tires than the rest of the lineup. These have the Midas. They're a, more of a gummier tire, not so much the front, so that's a pretty good bite to it. It has the Nissan brakes. So the beautiful thing is that this has the same exact rims and brake systems that you find on the full size bikes. So we're not sacrificing quality when it comes to stopping power and how long the rims are going to last. And this is where you can see that detuned pipe gets super skinny on this thing and that really creates a linear power. It takes a lot of that hit away so it's a lot more enjoyable for most customers. This is the adjustable power valve and of course on our channel we have a video explaining how this works. Uh, so in short, if we screw this out, it's a 5 mil hex head. About flush with the case is about as far out as we can come. It's going to take a lot of that hit away and give you open the power valve sooner. So it's going to be a, a broader power. If we screw that in as far as it'll go, and you got to be careful because it, it doesn't bottom out, it'll just keep screwing in. Uh, that will create a harder hit because it's going to open the power valve later in the RPM range. So you have to create more RPM for the power valve to open. Oil changes on these things are so easy. Uh, we have the fill here, and then the drain bolt is right here. It's a 13 mil. You can just slide a piece of plastic or a drain pan under here, catch all the oil. You're not dropping skid plates to do it. So we've always enjoyed that about this model. Here is that rear shock, a little bit smaller than the full size bike, of course. The Nissan rear brakes, all the same quality, the Galfer rotors, and it has the Midas rear tire to match. And again, it's a little bit softer compound. They do have the rear brake and tail light. One thing I noticed is how soft this seat is. I am super excited about that. There was nothing in the press release talking about how soft this is, but Beta did a very good job. And I'm, I'm really only noticing it on the cross trainer. I don't think the RRX Pro that we have inside is quite as squishy. So I'm not sure you're gonna have to buy a seat anymore. I think they did a really good job with that. On this side of the bike, we have the fuel shut off. So we have off, on, and reserve. I have not started this bike yet. Um, I did the other one, the other X Trainer is all set up. But I wanted to do this one on video because I want to show you how to adjust that idle. 
Uh, the air screw is down here. That always comes from the factory pretty well set, but this fine tunes our idle, the black screw here. We got the choke and you can push up on it to fully engage it and then push down to get rid of it. And our oil line, you can see it, and we're gonna talk more about tech stuff here in a minute. It's a six speed gearbox. It holds 2.3 gallons of fuel. And you can see I have gas up to here in it currently. And I do about one gallon of premix. So even though this bike is oil injected, we wanna make sure our oil injection pump is working, no check engine light comes on. So we're gonna do one gallon of premix in this before uh, the customer goes home and, and rides it. So on the handlebar, pretty similar layout to pretty much every beta. Hydraulic clutch, high beam, low beam, horn, left and right turn signals. We got the map switch here. This is the high beam flasher if it's on low or if it's on the low beam. Normal display, and I'm going to talk about this routing, super important here in a minute. Uh, display is probably still in kilometers, and I'm going to switch that by holding down on this. And it just switched to miles per hour, so it's better for us here. And then we have the uh, kill switch and start button. And keep in mind on these betas, there's no safety switch or no key. So as soon as we touch that, it's going to try to start. And uh, we got our throttle and our front brake. And then we're going to talk about a, um, a tech tip here as well. Another stock feature the beta cross trainer comes with is the cooling fan kit. That is so awesome. We're not adding it. They're anticipating this bike to be ridden at a lower speeds and that cooling fan will come on and work. It's a great feature. So let's give you guys some tech tips. If you just bought one of these, I want to make sure that uh, yours is set up properly. So right here, right away, we have the throttle free play and you can see how much free play there is. That's way too much. But before we do that, it is so important that we talk about throttle cable routing. So in 2013, Beta had some issues with the throttle cable being routed on the outside of the brake line. That is not the problem this year. So kind of come in the front here, Brax, come this way. And you can see, I'm putting my hand here to show the difference. The brake line's on the outside, and then our throttle cable is where it needs to be. But what happens during setup, and for some places, is you have to make sure that this line, I'm gonna unpack all this, this throttle cable has to be back in here. You can see the throttle cable is behind the black, what do you wanna call this, cable holders, the, the plastic they have there. What happens is a lot of the times this cable is on the outside because the dealer is putting this whole bracket on. This all comes down, we set this all up. So I stress this point because if this cable, even though it's behind the brake line, if it's on the outside here and routed down, it's really gonna pull on it when we're full tilt to the right. You can see how much further out the cable would be if it was out here. So really have a good look at that. Look at this clutch line, see how it's routed behind the black plastic as well. I've seen a lot of these where this cable is on the outside of it as well. It's going to wear on it and it pulls on it. So before you can really adjust your throttle free play, I really need to make sure you guys understand that routing and where that's going. Super critical. Now that we know that that's right, we can adjust the throttle free play. So I'm going to pull this rubber boot back and then I'm going to crack this loose. And you can see that it was adjusted all the way in. Uh, the jam nut here it was adjusted all the way in so far that the GM nut won't come loose on it. So at the factory, they had that all the way in. Well, I'm going to have to get a wrench later, but I can at least adjust this for you guys. So I'm taking a lot of that free play away about there. And let's make sure full right, we're still good. And full left, we're still good. So in a little bit, I'm going to have to take and loosen that GM nut up. I can't get it with my hands. I've got it so tight from the factory on the, on the brake line or cable there. So that's that. And then the next thing I want to do is show you guys a turn signal block. When we did the RRX Pro video yesterday, I showed folks how you can take this turn signal block off because in 80% of the states, these bikes are not street legal. So there's just a regular um, Phillips screw here and it goes into the plastic. If I take this screw out, and it's out now, I can slide this block out. It's got its own wire packet with it. Then you follow the wires back to the front side of the headlight mask here. You can show it, Braxton, come on over we can unplug it. It's gonna be this three prong one right here. It comes down off the side. That way you can totally eliminate this turn signal block and look how clean that makes the handlebars. If you come from this view, that is so clean. You know, we're just left with a high beam, low beam and the horn. So that's a really cool tech tip I like to show. 
One thing on these beta bikes is there's always a green check valve on the bottom of these gas caps. I've already removed this one on this bike. So I'm going to show part of the video from yesterday's RRX Pro now on this. I'm going to take this gas cap off. You guys have to remove these green plugs. Every bike that we sell, we remove these. This will end up in the bottom of your gas tank. This is your check valve. So if the bike fell over, it would prevent fuel from coming out. But it also prevents air from coming in. So it'll kind of vapor lock your bike. And also they just fall off. So here's how you remove it. You just take your finger. Let's see how easy that came off. So after like five miles on the trail, so this goes right in the trash. And then beyond that, you'll see inside of here, you gotta go one step further and get rid of this O-ring inside of here. So you can kind of see, I've got my knife under it. And so all the green shavings came out with the O-ring. So make sure O-ring is out as well. And so we can put our gas cap back on. That is tech tip number one. So one modification that a lot of folks do right away, and jetting is not affected by this. You can totally change it. Um, I get a lot of calls on that. So I'm gonna pull this uh, air box cover off and here is the air filter. And so I'm gonna pop this out and it's probably gonna be very, yeah, I can feel it. It's super restricted. See, we only have three air holes here. So that's also part of that detuned power for the cross trainer buyer. But you can put the regular two stroke air filter cage in here and that'll really open this up and a lot, lot more volume into the motor. So it's like a, um, it's like a 15 to $20 upgrade or change and it's highly recommended. I'd like to show you guys how to put the air filter back in. I get a lot of calls and questions on this. So we have a pin up here in the top that our peg's gonna go into. So first thing we do is aim for that, get that up in there. And then now I kind of rock the bottom of the air filter in and, and this is where people I think are calling me having problems is right here, this little tab is, is movable and I don't think they know they can put their finger on the back side. They're struggling to get this tab. So push your finger there push in on the cage and rock it straight in. And that way your air filter is back in. The thing we talked about yesterday in the RRX Pro was that the fuel line was way too long and it was kinked. That's not the problem with a cross trainer. This is a nice bend, really well put together. But one thing I'm not in love with is how tight these zip ties are. Come in really close to this Braxton. See how tight those zip ties are? Like I, I don't see why we want premature failures. So my suggestion with these is to cut these zip ties, which we'll do here in a minute. We're gonna put looser zip ties. We still need zip ties. We don't need to be killing the wires like that. So imagine this after you know a couple thousand miles of riding, we're just kind of creating wear points that don't need to be there. Okay, let's go over seat height. So let me pull this up off the stand here. I'm gonna come your way with it, or I'll come this way. All right, so yesterday on the RRX Pro, seat height was, what was it, Braxton? 37 and a quarter, 37.25. Okay, so, Boy, I feel like it's gonna be pretty close to this. This is claimed to be at 36 or 30, 35.8 in the book. Um, so I think yesterday I also went like this, one, two, three, just to kind of be consistent. And I also wanna note, like on Ryan's used 250 over there, that bike sits considerably lower than the stock 250s. Uh, and that's just because it's got time on it. So these bikes, when people come in the showroom, I'm always nervous because you get about 10 hours on this thing and it really opens up. Um, come on, Braxton, come on in here. What do you think you have there? Uh, 36 and a half is, if you get that down, there you go, that's flat there. So 36 and a half, so this is um, three quarters of an inch lower than the RRX Pro, right out of the showroom. But like I said, it's so important that you guys actually ride these for about 10 hours because everything is gonna settle and break in nicely. All right, so we're gonna start this bike for the first time. We have not started it yet. Let's come on in here, Braxton. Let's show this idle screw. And uh, so I'm gonna put this on here. And this is, they always come from the factory way too far out. I'm gonna guess from my experience, I'm gonna guess right in there somewhere. So like I said, the air screw is always super close from beta or it's right on target where it's supposed to be. But the um, upper black screw is the one that I'm always adjusting. So now we're gonna flick this to reserve. And we don't stop it on because the fuel petcock is so tall in these tanks that if you left it on on, you, this probably wouldn't even run right now because it's too low in the tank. We need to be in reserve. So if you're trail riding and it runs out, just know that your petcock is super tall in there. Um, I always give it choke on the very, very first start. I'm happy with the throttle adjustment. Let's check oil real quick. So come on in here. Let's show the oil, pop the seat off. And um, this is our two stroke oil tank. And just know that we do a pre-mix in there, perfect. We got a full tank. 
And this is considered full to me, just so you know, because if you go any higher than that, and when you take the bike off of the stand and you put it on its kickstand, like that one is, when the bike leans, the oil actually gets a lot higher to the filler neck. So be very careful not to overfill it. And you can show the battery bracks because I don't think we actually showed that yet. So Beta puts a smaller battery in here. I would probably consider upgrading that to a full size lithium battery, similar to the other Betas. Um, last talking point is this, uh, people silicone these in because you'll find this down in your air box later and wonder what it is. It goes, it sits right about there off the bottom of the seat base. And when you're putting your seat on, you gotta catch this tab and then this tab here on the frame. A lot of folks come in and they start way too high and we, we can bend the seat base. So if I pull back on it, drop it down in, and then it's kind of like push forward and everything, it goes in. So all of that just to start it. So we got oil, we're good on gas. Uh, turn the choke on. Check that thing out. That's pretty cool, huh? Fired right up. Idle is still a little low. I already turned the choke off on it. So I'm gonna bring this in a little bit. Why don't you come over here and show it so we can show people. So I haven't touched it yet. Maybe you come on this angle. You can kind of hear it's about to die on me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it, hang on. And then we're gonna take this, and go in about a half a turn, I think. Now we gotta get it to settle back in. I don't like to adjust idle on a cold motor, especially one that's getting double the oil, because right now we have the pre-mix and oil injection. So it's gonna smoke more here in a minute when it warms up. I would say that idle's pretty good. Um, and then of course, as it warms up is when I really need to fine tune it. Gotta let it warm up for a little bit. You can come in and see this map switch right here. It's pretty cool. So it's got the dual maps on it. So you got the blue light and then the white. Yeah, so rain cloud versus sunny day. Um, it just changes the timing. So it gives a little more power in the dry mode. Things are so easy. Th like this is why the Cross Rain is such a big seller. Is even a two stroke, I can almost let this fudge out without a dying. It's incredible how easy it is to ride. So if you can imagine if you're in a creek and you're doing like all this hard enduro riding, this thing is so easy, it's so torquey. So one thing I just noticed just going down the driveway is how high this rear brake pedal is. So come on in Brax, we'll show this. Um, this is super adjustable by the way. Um, it is way above the foot peg and for me being really tall, that's, that's bad. Um, so how we adjust that is we have a jam nut here and Beta actually makes a thinner jam nut that you can purchase. Um, you would crack this jam nut loose, turn the upper bolt, and then you would turn and adjust this whole knob here. Um, this one, you look back here at this junction, at this point here, um, there's a lot of free play in this, and this is standard with the Beta stuff. So I'm not picking on the cross trainer, it's been this way for 15 years. They make a really cool, um, it's, I think it's by Fast, F-A-A-S-T, it's on the Beta accessory page, it's like 60 bucks. Uh, it's a whole new rear class. We put those on all of our bikes. Highly recommended. Um, so that helps clean up that rear brake uh, free play. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you're looking for more beta content, you can look at all of our 2013 videos where we really built up our cross trainer. A lot of the bikes identical. You can really follow along with that and look at the pipe video, look at the air filter video. We put uh, KYB forks on it for Mark. And then there's a bunch of riding videos of Mark thrashing that thing through all the hard enduros. So. Uh, our goal is to bring you really good beta content here at 3Cs. We're a family dealership. If you're in the tri-state area, we're right in western New York, close to Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Buffalo. Love to be your dealer. We do ship bikes. We've shipped them all over. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys found the video helpful. Enjoy the ride and see you on the trail.